We have to continue fighting for the middle class. That speech after speech after speech. I would be hard pressed to think of three of the 28 that didn't talk about the middle class. The middle class is what is concerning to every one of my senators. Elizabeth Warren, somebody asked me on the way in here, Elizabeth Warren is going to be part of your leadership. What do you expect her to do? I expect her to be Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is being tabbed by some of the various WAGs as the next Democratic rock star and a surefire bet to be at least heavily considered for the presidency in 2016. Then again, there are those who are of a like mind in the political IQ department who are certain the inevitable handoff between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton has already begun. Let's dig into the liberal playbook as we welcome to Midpoint co-founder and president of Bronstein and Weaver, where he plies his trade as a fine Democratic strategist, among other things. Michael Bronstein joins us on the show. Michael, thanks for being here. Good afternoon. Mike, are you buying into all this, that Elizabeth Warren's the next rock star, she's inevitable, and you better get ready for it because she's going to plow and just run over Hillary with ease? She's absolutely uh, created excitement inside the party infrastructure. Certainly, uh, people who are on the left side of the party are really excited about a uh, potential candidacy, but I don't think that you're going to see her run for president this time around. I think that with the Senate leadership role that she's just been given and assumed that she's going to... I, she's going to have more of a national platform in policy making, but I think ultimately in the end, we aren't going to see her run for president. She says she doesn't want to run for president, but do you get the idea that she's pretty darn smart right now and what she's doing, she is strategizing herself so that when indeed she does not run, she will wind up with a key role and she will be a power broker regardless of what happens and who gets elected? I think that she's a power broker and I think that she's an important voice who's come on the national stage. And in a lot of ways, she's the spirit and uh, soulfulness of the party and is speaking to a lot of issues that people feel like they aren't getting talked about right now. And what I think what that, is that? Well, let, let me ask, why. what is it that makes her the soul? What is that exactly? So I think that what, inside the Democratic Party, there are people who talk about policy positions that really make up sort of the heart of the party. And Elizabeth Warren has been an unabashed supporter of Democratic policy issues certainly not scared of being uh, of taking liberal positions, certainly not scared of standing up with some backbone on uh, some of the issue positions of the Democratic Party. And after, um, after this election cycle, there are people who are definitely looking for that type of enthusiasm and that type of leadership inside the Democratic Party, which is why I think that she's only expanded her voice and uh, created a real credible platform for herself. Would you agree then with an article that appeared in Politico recently that stated that there is no viable opponent for Hillary Clinton at this time, so the liberal media is just trying desperately to create one. I think that that is correct. I think that there really isn't a viable candidacy. And when Elizabeth Warren has been asked whether or not she's going to run for president, uh, she's, she's, uh, she said no. So I, I think that there will be others who enter the Democratic primary just because it's a presidential primary. And I mean, if you hear people talking in the party, uh, there will be people who jump in. I mean, Bernie Sanders has already made uh, motions and overtures. He's hired consultants, and he has been very much talking about getting in. And I think that ultimately there will be sort of second-tier candidacies, but you won't really see anything uh, the, uh, the likes of Hillary Clinton. And there really isn't anybody sort of hiding in the back room, I think, who could come out of nowhere really to knock her off for the nomination. Democrats are pretty excited uh, about her, and I, I think that you're going to see a, a very compelling case made by, by Hillary Clinton. All right, about 30, 40 seconds left before we take a break and talk a little more. So then, let me just make sure I get this. Elizabeth Warren, Jim Webb, the former Virginia senator, Maryland Governor O'Malley, uh, Bernie Sanders and such, those seem to be the four that people are talking about. Could any of these four get enough money and mount enough of a campaign to defeat Hillary Clinton for the nomination? I think not. I think that the party infrastructure and the money people who are inside the Democratic Party, they're all uh, very much moving and coalescing around Hillary Clinton. Many of them have gotten involved in the Ready for Hillary movement, and a lot of the money that's already out on the table is already – uh, has already made their decision about which way they're going to go. So I think that there are very little surprises in this right now. All right, there you go. Follow the money. Uh, hold on just a few moments here. More with Michael Bronstein on the other side of a break. We'll dig into the left strategy for Keystone, immigration amnesty, and other tidbits. 
and at 51 minutes after the hour, telling it like it is, has a few words for the knee-jerkers who don't understand what a fortunate son really is. Started by John Fogarty, Creedence Clearwater Revival, pumped up by Bruce Springsteen at a Veterans Day concert. Oh, if you need jerked on this one, you better be ready. That's coming up later right here on Midpoint.